Next example of partial fraction decomposition. And I talked about the different ones that I would do, linear factors, which is what I just did. Now I'm looking at repeated linear factors. And how do I know that they're repeated linear factors? Well, look at the denominator. Nice thing is that it's factored for me. Hey, lucky me, awesome. That's not always the case, right? If it were not factored, I'd have to factor it. X is a linear factor. X minus one is a linear factor, but it's repeated twice. X minus one is repeated twice. So I have one linear factor that is just represented one time, and I have one linear factor that is represented twice. So I have a combination of linear factors and then repeated linear factors. So how do I approach that? So let's, let's look at that. Again, what am I doing? I'm separating the fraction into different um, other fractions, right? So let's say I have three total factors, right? One, two, three. So I'm going to have three fractions. The first denominator is going to have the first linear factor. The second denominator is going to have the second linear factor repeated only once. And the third denominator is going to have it repeated twice. The fourth, if I wanted, would have it repeated three times. I mean, if this was a third degree, I'd have to have an x minus 1 to the third. I'd have to, you know, I keep going until I reach whatever the heck this exponent is. Um, and then because they're linear factors, again, um, uh, my, my numerators are constants. So A, but this is a different one, B, and then this is a different one, C. So now I have three unknowns. Um, so now I need to figure out what A, B, and C are. Okay? So that's my setup, but now I have to do it. So again, I'm basically solving a rational equation. So I like to solve them by um, multiplying both sides by the LCD which is x times x minus 1 squared, technically always what this is, because I want to cancel all the denominators, get rid of all the fractions. <clears throat> um, so let's see where I'm at. What do I get? Um, when I multiply this fraction by the denominator, you know, it gets rid of the denominator. When I multiply this fraction by the denominator, by this, right, the LCD, the x goes, but I still have this x minus 1 squared. When I multiply the second fraction by this, one of the x minus 1 go, but I'm still left with an x and another x minus 1. The third one multiplied by this cancels the x minus 1 squared, but is left with an x. So I got some stuff to do here before I even compare the two sides. x plus 2, that stays. Now, I can't distribute a in here. I have to do the um, exponent first, right? So a times the quantity this squared, which is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Um, I'm going to distribute this now, plus bx squared minus bx plus cx. Um, now I'll distribute the a, it's ax squared minus 2ax plus a, plus bx squared minus bx plus cx. And, you know, double check, make sure I didn't make a mistake, right? ax squared minus 2ax plus a, bx squared minus bx, and then plus cx. Sometimes I like to verify that because obviously you can make a mistake. And if you do that there, it's going to suck because you have to solve a system and go through all this nonsense to go back and say, oh, I made a stupid error distributing. Um, now, comparing both sides. I notice that on the right side I have quadratic terms and on the left side I do not have quadratic terms. So that means that the coefficients, a plus b, of the quadratic terms have to combine to be zero in order for it to disappear and not be and that's the way that the two sides would have to compare. Um, let's look at the linear terms. I have a coefficient of 1 in front of my linear term, and I have 1, 2, 3 linear terms. So negative 2a plus, or minus, I should say, b, <coughs> excuse me, minus b plus c should be equal to the coefficient in front of x1. And then... I also have a constant, so I have one constant term on the left, and actually only one constant term on the right. So that's good, because that gives me A right away. A has to be equal to 2. But now I have a system of equations of three variables. And now I have to solve for A, B, and C. Now this could be, I mean, any type of representation of a system of three. This is a nice representation, because I automatically have A. That's awesome. A is done. 
And based on A, now I automatically have B. That makes my life easy. <clears throat> I'm going to use a different color so I don't confuse. I will blue even though it's kind of hard to see sometimes. But, right? Now that I know A, I could find B. Um, 2 plus B is 0, which means that B is negative 2. Now that I have A and I have B, I could find C. Negative 2 times A, which is 2, minus B, which is negative 2, plus C should be equal to 1. Negative 4 plus 2 plus C is 1. Negative 2 plus C is 1. So C is, add 2 to both sides, 3. Done. I got my A, got my B, got my C. That wasn't a bad system. So therefore, my final result, if I'm deco decomposing this, representing this as a summer difference, in this case of three different fractions, is a, which is 2 over x, plus b. Where is b? b is negative 2. So minus 2 over x minus 1. And then what was c? c was 3, plus 3 over x minus 1, the quantity squared. And here is my different fractions. If I were to go backwards, right, if I were to combine them into a single fraction, it should match this guy up here. Okay, so this was an example, obviously, of linear factors and then repeated linear factors. So if you have repeated linear factors, right, start with a single one of them, and then two of them, and then three of them, and then four of them, however many you have here, you're going to have that many fractions.